the options pattern in C-sharp is a quick but powerful way to get information out of your configuration files and into dependency injection. You can get runtime value changes, you can validate the data, and more with this pattern. In this video, I will introduce you to the options pattern and show you how to implement it in Blazor, although you could implement it in any C-sharp project type. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes you just need the quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's go here to Visual Studio. I have a Blazor web app with just the server side rendered portion of it. So there's no client side value. And I've made a couple modifications so we can kind of speed this up or, you know, not do the, uh, the boring stuff. So here in my app settings.json, I have cloud info with three um, key value pairs. Now, just to be clear, this is just an app settings.json, but it could be in app settings.development.json or in secrets.json or any combination of those. We can do in environment variables and so on. We're just using app settings.json just because it's easiest for this demo. Now, I also have the cloud info options, which is a, a POCO model which has storage, website, and API that corresponds to the three things I'm going to want to get out, storage, website, and API. Now, right now, those two are not hooked up, but they're ready to be, okay? Now, what I want to do is take this model and inject it into dependency injection so that I can use it in my pages. Speaking of which, we have the home page I've made a modification on. So, down here, I have if cloud info, which is that that uh, um, model, cloud info options. If it's not null, then I want to give an unordered list that has the values for storage website and API. Okay, so right now it would be blank because there is no values for those. And I do have my on initialize method ready. We we're going to inject this information in. I also have a using directive up here they'll make it easier to get to the options. Okay, so how do we get these options? Go to program.cs, and here where we're doing services, we're going to say builder.services.add options, and the option to add is cloud info options. That's the model you want to load. And that you want to run that. We do not want to close this yet. We don't have a semicolon here. We're just going to go to the next line so it's easier to read. We're going to say dot bind configuration. And we're going to say cloud info. And this corresponds to that section in app settings. So cloud info, that's where we're going to load and put the values into cloud info options. It's pretty much that simple, but there's a lot more depth you can go into. So let's first just utilize this. So up here, we're going to, on the home page, we're going to inject a I, I options. There we go. I options, cloud info options. We're going to call this cloud info options. Now notice I am not injecting just cloud info options. I'm injecting an I options of type cloud info options. And the reason why is because this is saying, hey, we're going to get the singleton version of this. And that's important because there's actually three different options we can do here, which we're going to talk about. So we're going to get the singleton version first. And that just gets one for the entire website uh, for its life. Now, cloud info options, we're going to come down here. We want to, we want to get this cloud info options, the um, the actual model. So we call that cloud info. And in the on initialize, I'm going to say equals cloud info options dot value. So that's the, the I options, cloud info options. We're going to get the value of that and put it into our, our variable. Now let's run this. And when the page loads, we get hello world with storage of Azure Storage website of Azure Static Web Apps and API of Azure Web App. Okay, so those are our three values from our settings. So if I were to come back here and go to app settings and say, you know what, um, 
blank that one out, or let's call this um, test instead. I hit save. I come back over here. I can hit refresh. I can go to counter and come back. It still says Azure storage because we, we loaded one instance for the entire site for its lifetime. Okay, so let's undo that. And we're going to change something. We're going to go back to here and we're going to change this to be um, iOptions snapshot. Now, what this does is it loads on a scoped basis. And what that means is for ASP.NET, it's going to, for each web request, it's going to get um, a new instance of cloud info options. Okay, so let's load this up. It still loads the same values because we, ha we revert them back to normal. Let's go over to appsings.json. Let's put our test back in. And we come over here, we go to counter and go back. And now it says test. Okay, we, we have a new call to the server. So that's one way of doing it. And that's scoped. So every time a new request comes in, it's going to load those values in with the latest information. Notice I was changing the value of my file. And this is not a hot reload thing. This is actually because of the fact that it's monitoring that file for or it's loading that file every time. So it's going back to that file and getting the new information. It's not holding that in memory. Okay. So that's, um, that is options and options snapshot. So options is singleton options snapshot is, uh, scoped. Now notice I didn't change anything about program.cs. I didn't change my dependency injection. I just changed what I asked for, which also means you can ask for different things on different pages. But there's another one I want to look at, and that is we want to look at iOptions Monitor. This one's a bit different. Notice down here it says, no, we can't get value. Why not? Because it's current value. The reason why is because you can actually monitor for new changes live and then alert to those new changes and say, hey, those new changes happen. And the way you do that um, is we would say something like cloud info options dot, and there's an on change event. And so you, you can link up to that event and it will listen for any changes and then it will update the values. Now we're not gonna do that because we don't really have time to do that in this video, but just know that that's there. This does work in a similar way. So if you see here, we've got test on our page, but if we come back over here and we were to change this back to Azure storage and save it, well, on our page, you know, of course it still says test, but if you go to counter and come back, it's now Azure storage. Now, here's a tricky bit though. This, um, you would think, well, okay, so that's just another uh, scoped version, right? Well, no, it's actually a singleton, but it's monitoring for changes and loading the new values. So it's a little bit different. And again, you can do some events based upon values being changed. You actually, you know, even if the page is not uh, left and come back to, you can still capture those new values and display them. So that's another option. Now, there's even more you can do with this binding. And I, I can't cover everything, but I want to cover one more thing, and that is validation. So I'm going to take the semicolon off and say dot validate. And we're going to say OPTS. We're going to put an arrow key here or arrow here. And then I'm going to do it on a new line because it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to say not string is null or white space. And we'll say OPTS dot storage. And I'm going to do and, and we're going to copy this two more times. So one more, two more, like so. And we're going to validate that website is not null and API is not null. Now, if it is null, what happens? Well, after the last one, we're going to put double quotes and say cloud info options failed validation. Okay. So with that, we're now checking to make sure all three values are correct. So let's come over here and take out storage. We're going to launch this application. And when we do, we get an unhandled exception. 
and the unhandled exception says cloud info options failed validation. So we know right away that it failed because of the fact that we threw in that validation logic right up front. Okay, so that's how to use the options pattern inside of C Sharp, inside of pretty much any C Sharp project type. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.